For Nuke 14.0, as part of the 3D system update, we've introduced a new performant scene graph to allow you to view the contents of your 3D scene. The scene graph offers an overview of the scene and is a tool to view, navigate and manage large 3D scenes, allowing artists to work with more. Essentially, the scene graph is a list of everything within the 3D stage at the point where the viewer is connected. The UI we've introduced is designed with artists' workflows in mind, focusing on efficiency and familiarity with other 3D software. The scene graph has a new dedicated panel so that you can always see the contents of your 3D scene. You can access the new 3D workspace via Workspace 3D and the scene graph panel will appear on the left hand side. It's also available in the same panel as the node properties under a new tab which is always on as default. Having a dedicated scene graph panel also brings Nuke in line with other 3D software and allows you to see the same data across applications. The scene graph comes hand in hand with the new hierarchical structure of the USD stage. In Nuke's classic 3D system, geometry had a fixed structure consisting of a flat list of objects each of which had a transform and a number of geometric primitives. Every object in the new 3D system has a unique ID or path, and the scene graph allows you to view these within the context of the hierarchical structure in a list view. This includes geometry, lights, cameras and materials. You can think about the scene graph as another viewer. It's just a different representation of the 3D scene. The scene graph allows you to work more efficiently because it gives you more control over the structure of your 3D scene. Creating an organised hierarchy allows you to quickly and easily make selections based on folder groups rather than additive selection. Geometry highlights synchronisation between the viewer and the scene graph allows you to pinpoint the items you want to work with in an intuitive way. If you click on something in the scene graph, the item will also highlight in the viewer and vice versa. You can search for items in your scene using the scene graph search feature so that you can quickly and easily find what you need in your scene. The results of your search will highlight in bold. The number of search results and the result that is selected in the cycle appears next to the search bar. Press enter to view the first search result and again to cycle through the list of search results. The new scene graph has various columns for different data. A path column so that you can see your objects in their hierarchy. A payload column, which is another USD concept that allows you to control which parts of a scene are loaded into memory. With payloads, you can see your entire scene hierarchy in the scene graph without having them loaded into memory, and therefore nuke 3D space. If you are using payloads, you can choose to load them or not by clicking on the payloads icon for each item in your scene. There's also a global payloads toggle at the top of the scene graph so you can choose if you want to load payloads or not when opening the USD stage. There's an active column, which allows you to deactivate specific prims, both from the scene graph itself and is an indicator if a prim has been deactivated elsewhere. A visibility column, which allows you to toggle whether a 3D object is visible in the 3D viewer or not, allowing you to focus on only the items you want to work with. Bear in mind that this is an override which only acts on the 3D viewer and will not represent what is rendered via the scanline renderer and write nodes. A type column to inform you of the type of primitive you're working with. A kind column, another term specific to USD where every prim that has geometry should have a kind for best practice. And a purpose column, which is the render purpose set for a primitive. Clicking the little minus and plus arrow next to a parent will expand and collapse the folder to the first level. Holding shift down whilst clicking will allow you to expand all nested elements within the parent. You can also select multiple items in the scene graph by holding shift or control down, depending if you want to select in series or not. If a prim has been overridden, that is changed from the state it was in upon importing, a small yellow dot will appear next to its visibility or active icons. This shows that the state of the prim has been altered in Nuke since being imported. We've included a simple right-click context menu, allowing you to collapse all, expand all, hide or show options to toggle the visibility. Note that the yellow dot appears next to the visibility column to show that the prim has been overridden. There's also a clear all overrides option which isn't context specific like the other options, but will allow you to clear all overrides from prims and remove the yellow dot. 
As you may have seen in the previous video on paths and masking, you can drag and drop paths from the scene graph into the new mask knob in the new 3D nodes. The contents of the node graph, viewer, and scene graph are all linked, and you can alter the hierarchy of the items in the scene graph using the new mask and path knobs. Modifier nodes like GeoTransform have a new mask knob, which allows you to explicitly state which parts of your scene graph you want that node to affect. Creation nodes like GeoCard have a new path knob so that you can specify where you want that object to live in the scene graph. So that's an introduction to the new 3D scene graph, which is designed to make it faster and easier to navigate, manage, and get a good overview of large 3D scenes. Thanks for watching.